and welcome to On The Mat TV. We're here today at Gracie Barra Warrington and we're joined by Professor Graham Finneran. And how did you first become interested in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and what inspired you to become a professor? Uh, well, when I was in the military, I did a lot of boxing and it took a big blow, to be fair, in, uh, in combat sport and I couldn't spar for a, for a while and I wanted something that still challenged me. So when I was obviously looking into different sports, wrestling, submission grappling started becoming really big in the UK and um, I started to do a lot more of the grappling and the wrestling thinking that my channel was going to go into MMA when I finally um, recovered from my big knockout head injury if you like and I just fell in love with the art of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu to be fair and I just carried on from there still trying to figure it out to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> well that's it isn't it, it's like one of them sports where you just continuously learn and then I think you get to a point don't you where you think to yourself do I want to be like getting punched in the head? Yeah you that's, it, I mean? that's it yeah and then, uh, and then after a while I just fell in love with it and I thought no I've really got to master this before I move into MMA I know I want to be really really good and I'm still trying to become 17 years later <laughs> really really good. <laughs> what do you believe sets Brazilian Jiu Jitsu apart from other martial arts and why do you think it's gained such popularity worldwide recently? I think it's just so effective. People know how effective Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is. You know, closing the distance, closing the guy down, manipulating the guy, choking him out or submitting him. You know, you don't really get anything more powerful than that. Of course, you've got your strikes and, and, and your knockouts and stuff like that in different martial arts, but you know, if you can close a distance, if you can manipulate someone, stood up, manipulate on, on the ground and just take all of their strengths away from them, then it's just it's just so dominating. So, you know, that appeals to a lot of people. And, and like we talked about before, not everyone wants to get punched and kicked and, and, and go to work full of bruises and lumps and bumps. But anyone can do jiu-jitsu. That's why it's so appealing because anyone can do jiu-jitsu. You could be a pilot, a doctor, you know, from any profession. You could come in, have a great workout. You can, you know, feel like you've beaten someone up by, you know, wrestling them, submitting them, manipulating them, or maybe have the same done to you and come out and pretty much come up unscathed. You know, you can go back to work with just a, you know, a few scratches or something like that, but no black eyes, broken nose and damaged fists and stuff like that, that you do get from striking. So, you know, one, I think it's really attractive. It's really addictive to try and submit someone or to try and finish someone in a round. Um, the art of that is really attractive and challenging. And at the same time is anyone can do it from any profession and, and feel pretty safe. Just like me, when I needed some time out from, from striking from the big knock, out, you're not getting punched or, or kicked in the head anymore, so you're not taking that, that huge impact. How do you approach teaching students with varying levels of experience and skill? Yeah, it's a tough question to be fair. The way we approach it here at Grace Bar Warrington and across Grace Bar to be fair is we break everything down into different levels. So basically you've got your beginners, intermediate and advanced. Same with the kids as well, you know, you've got little tiny champs, the little, the little guys, and you've got your future champs. And then inside of that as well, you've got your beginners, intermediate and your advanced. So you need a lot of coaching support. Um, and then basically break everyone down to skill levels. If people are super fit and super super aggressive, you know, last thing they want to be is in a fundamentals class trying to trying to do that. They need to be in competition training or no gi or something like this. So it's trying to find your place. So what we try and do here at Grace Bar Warrington is put loads of classes on that fit everyone different criteria and then you kind of cater your techniques and what you're teaching to each different audience and, and the tempo of the classes as well. And in your opinion, how does Brazilian Jiu Jitsu promote physical fitness and mental well-being? There's nothing outside of the mats that can really simulate Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. It's, there's nothing like it. You know, if you need to be a good swimmer, you need to go swimming. If you need to be a good runner, you need to go running. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is just like that. You know, it's very, very specific. It doesn't matter how much running or swimming or weight lifting you do. That obviously supports injury prevention. But to be really good at jiu-jitsu, you need to do a lot of Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Nothing can simulate body movements and the body patterns uh, that you need to do with inside of Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And by doing that, you know, you're burning a lot of calories. It's a lot of muscle endurance. So you're constantly building muscle and burning fat at the same time. So that's why a lot of Brazilian jiu-jitsu guys look in, in such great shape because there's a lot of dynamics. You know, there's explosive training, there's endurance training, and there's strength all combined all in one round. And of course, it's not just you training on your own, normally you've got a training partner who's challenging you, so you've always got to try and step up to the next training partner who's, who's coming in front of you, and then you're constantly pushing and challenging each other, so physical fitness wise, nothing like it. 
your physical well-being. You know, there's nothing like coming onto the big blue cloud. You can just forget about everything outside of normal life, really. Once you walk through that doors and you uh, get onto the mats, and I call it the big blue cloud, where you just forget everything outside and you just enjoy training in a great environment, great people, doing a sport that you love, and any stresses or problems that you've got outside of the mat, you can just forget about and you can just lose yourself in the art of jiu-jitsu. Is there anyone that inspires you, anyone that you look up to, anyone that motivates you to, to do what you're doing and to, to get better at what you're doing? Yeah, definitely. I'm very lucky really. I'm really privileged to have so many great professors and great coaches and great mentors really that have been able to look after me through the years. Obviously being a Grace Bar student, my professor is Braulio Estima. You know, you don't get much better than a great professor and a great mentor than Professor Braulio. So, you know, he's super inspiring, everything that he's done for the sport. And Victor Estima, his brother, really he's like a mentor of mine. Of course he's done incredible things in Jiu Jitsu. But what he's done for me outside of the mats, if that's personal life, the advice that he gives me, he's a really like a life coach and a life mentor, as well as a coach in jiu-jitsu. And like I said, I've been so privileged over for these years. I've had great coaches. Neil Simpkins been a huge influence in me in my coaching style. He coached me for a few years when I was in the military, in between different academies, dropping into Neil Simpkins gym and training with him and watching his coaching style with the kids. That was very inspiring. It allowed me to adopt a very specific coaching style with inside of the kids that really me and Neil had a great relationship. One of my other coaches as well, uh, Lee Catlin, years ago was an incredible wrestler, judo guy and jiu-jitsu guy. They're all my professors and coaches really who've helped grow me individually and really in inspired me and I've, I've got to be really grateful for them guys who've had the huge influence but as well as that is, you know, I've also trained a lot with Haji Gracie and Charles uh, Nigamonte. I love Roger's style and, and I love training with Charles Nigamonte. It, he's got a very similar style to me, very aggressive, really inspiring. Inspiring. Yeah, them guys are great. And also, you know, Atavio Sousa, every time we go to America, I love basing myself with Atavio Sousa as well. He's another idol of mine. So they're all my idols, really, and mentors and coaches that have really inspired me over the years. And really, like I said, I'm really privileged to um, be around, you know, the quality of, of them guys. You looking up to all them role models, and how does it make you feel when you see the physical and mental change in your students and you see them achieve things that they never thought they could achieve. And yeah, I mean, it's absolutely a beautiful thing because you're literally changing lives, you're helping people succeed inside of the mats and outside of mats, if that's physical well-being, mental well-being, if that's losing weight, if that's just escaping from normal life, if that's achieving gold medals or if it's helping someone else achieve gold medals with inside of the team. It's like a, a proud dad and it's quite emotional at times as well. You know, a lot of time we have a lot of tears on the mats as well, of tears of joy, of course, because it's so emotional of the, the changes or you're part of someone's journey who's man managed to win world championships or European championships and you've, you're allowing people to achieve the goals and at the same time is all of the things that I've received in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I'm now able to, to give back and share with my community, just help the community and, and help everyone around us. Quite emotional at times watching people grow as individuals in, in different aspects of the life and especially in the sport. And how do you balance running this academy and training alongside family commitments? And This is like a full-time job for you and how do you manage that? Yeah, it's a lot of pro plus, <laughs> a lot of no-co. It is a fine, a fine balance. You know, I am a family guy. I've got two beautiful children and a wife at home. I know they earn for, for time with you. As well as that is, you know, we've got an incredible academy here at Grace Ball Warrington, one of the best competition teams. You know, we're very lucky to have hundreds and hundreds of students training here. Um, also, you know, we've got other schools that we run as well and mentor at as well. And it's so hard to find that balance I'm very lucky to have a huge coaching team as well. I've been able to mentor a lot of coaches, develop a lot of training teams. One skill that the, the military gave me was to always be able to you know, step up to the next level. It's one thing that we really promote here at Grace Ball Warrington is to inspire other leaders to help others as well. So what really helps me balance everything is my, is my team that I have around me. You know, my coaching team that I have around me if I didn't have them side by side with me, everything would fall apart. So I'm really lucky. They allow me to have family time. 
and they allow me to go to tournaments and support tournaments and big events as well as help and mentor at, at other schools and as well keep the very high values and standards here at Grace Bar Wines and so the magic really is invest in the people who are closest to you, invest in really really strong leaders and leadership characters and so on who can really believe in the future of the sport, in the future of the team, invest in them people and everything will fall in place. What are your goals and aspirations for the future in terms of the academy and how do you plan to achieve them? Yeah, when I first opened the school, I was really, really active on the scene. I was competing every month, traveling all around the world, really, to try and achieve that. And what everyone wants in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu really is, is a world title. Everyone wants the world title. So, you know, I was hunting that for a long time. And, I, you know, I still have aspirations for this, but really now my aspirations are to continue to grow the community, grow the sport, and uh, keep inspiring the students to, to keep on achieving their goals. I do still want to compete, but I've suffered with quite a lot of injuries in the last two years, multiple sur surgeries and stuff like that. Uh, I actually compete on Sunday at the Grace Bar Component, so I'm still an active competitor, but I've got to try and juggle, like you said, you know, family life, coaching, mentoring, and my own personal training, as well as that is, I've struggled with some, some serious injuries in the last two years, but definitely past the rehab stage now, back into strong competition training, back into deep strength and conditioning, and just keep training around the injuries really. And if my body feels good and I feel good, then I'm gonna enter the big tournaments. I'm gonna enter every tournament I can. And I'm not really competing anymore to prove anything to anyone. I just do it to inspire the students. The students love to watch Professor compete, win or lose. They, you know, and show that heart and show that dedication. So I'm really just going to compete now to inspire the community. And if I can pick up, you know, some, some great titles on the way, then it's a bonus as well. And on a final note, what advice would you give to someone considering starting their journey in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, both students and potentially instructors? Yeah, it's, a, it's an easy question. You know, you've just got to walk through them doors. You've got to walk through the doors, go to the right school with the right environment and the right team so that feels good for you and just walk through the doors. The hardest thing in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is just walking through the doors the first time because you're anxious, you don't know what to expect. It's a sport that you've maybe never done before, people you've never spoken to or seen before. It could be quite a daunting thing. You're going into this maybe this hostile environment and once you walk through the doors and you meet the community of the Jiu-Jitsu community, you're going to be welcomed with open arms, Guys are going to give you a big hug on the mats and off the mats. And, you know, you're going to start training and you're going to have them endorphins released. Everyone's going to look after you, especially if you're with the right team in the right programs, you know, to help develop you as well. Because, you know, some, some teams just have everyone trains together. You want to be at a school that's got, you know, different levels from beginner to intermediate to advanced. That's going to show great progression and make sure you don't get injured and just walk through the doors and the jiu-jitsu community are going to look after you from there. That's the hardest thing to do is just to walk through them doors and then just get on the mats and the jiu-jitsu community will look after you from there. And you'll wish you'd done it sooner. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. That's it, definitely. Everyone always wishes they'd done it sooner. We all do. And like, it's so inspiring now watching the, the tiny champs from three years old training and then, you know, like my son, Ben, he's been training, I think, like 11 years already. Imagine the level that he's going to be in another 10 years. He's going to be 20 years old, been training for 15 years. Yeah. It's just going to be insane. That's And that's the level that we're getting now that you're seeing at the World Championships, you're seeing at ADCC. You're seeing these 17-year-olds, you know, 15, 16, 17-year-old, 18-year-olds absolutely murdering and, and winning you know, ADCCs and world titles. That's because they've been training since they were three years old, you know. It's just really, really inspiring. Well, thank you very much for the interview today and being so welcoming at the Academy. It's been fantastic. And uh, we look forward to seeing how all you guys do down at the competition. Yeah, on thanks. thanks for coming down, yeah, Dave, uh, on the Matt TV. It's been great to have you, a real honour to have you in the Academy and looking after us. Thanks, Dave. Brilliant, Appreciate thank it. you very much. Thanks, Cheers, you. Cheers.